And now the final stretch. It is, of course, the month of August. It is Women's Month. And when we talk about um, a cyber crime and investigating cyber crime, what comes to mind? You're probably thinking about some whiz kid sitting somewhere hacking away behind a computer. And most probably you're thinking he is male. Well, um, my next guest is challenging all of these stereotypes uh, in a male-dominated world uh, where she is making her mark in this particular industry. And uh, speaking to us now via Skype is Fatima Amir Mia, who is a director in technology, media, and telecommunications practice at uh, law firm, commercial law firm, that is Cliff Decker Hoffmeyer. Thanks so much for speaking to us this morning, Fatima. Hi, good morning. So, uh, Fatima, uh, first and foremost, how did you get into this field? Because it is rather male-dominated. So, what drew you to it? Uh, well, I studied um, law at the University of Cape Town, and then um, I did my articles at a big law firm in Joburg, and I practiced in the media, technology, and telecoms team. And um, I've always had an interest and a passion in the way that technology is implemented in businesses. And I saw the gap in the market. There were not many specialists at the time. And that's really what propelled me to study um, and specialize in this area. So uh, tell me, are women taken seriously as hackers? Because, uh, you know, uh, some would say, well, you need to get into the mind of that hacker in order to try and solve uh, whatever cyber crime you may be after. Uh, are you taken seriously, do you believe? Uh, well, I think uh, that's an interesting question. I think um, the beauty of the internet is that um, it's both anonymous um, because anyone can be a hacker. So um, essentially, um, as long as you have an internet connection, whether you are a 60-year-old man or a 16-year-old um, teenager sitting in Africa, you're able to be um, a, a cyber criminal, essentially. Um, what is important um, from a legal perspective is that um, we've got the Cybercrime Bill, which um, criminalizes and describes what an offense is. And the important elements of the offense are the elements of intention and the elements of unlawfulness. So it's less about the identity of the perpetrator as long as you can prove those two elements. So, so what would you say, Fatima, is the extent of cybercrime that we deal with in South Africa? Well, recent statistics have actually shown that South Africa is rated um, as the number one hub for cybercrime, and that's according to a 2018 Risk um, Alliance Barometer report. And um, I know that in Africa, South Africa is the third country which is the hardest hit by cybercrime. So it's definitely something which is um, facing, it's, it's a crisis that's facing us at the moment and you'll notice that we've had quite a few data breaches over the last few years and we don't, don't really have the legislation in place um, to, to regulate this. So, so you, you did just give us a brief overview there of the law and what it says uh, but what are the legalities in as far as solving cyber crime in South Africa uh, and not infringing on privacy laws of the individual? Okay, so in South Africa, I would say that our law enforcement agencies are generally quite poorly equipped to deal with cybercrime. The law relating to cybercrime is essentially a hybrid between um, legislation and the common law. Currently, um, cybercrime offences are regulated under the Electronic Communications and Transactions Act. Um, but I think that the government has realised that we haven't really kept up with international standards and with technology. And so they have promulgated, um, on the one hand, firstly, the Protection of Personal Information Act, which was in 2013. And then recently, last year, in November, they, uh, the National Assembly passed the Cybercrimes Bill. And what's important about the bill is that it consolidates and codifies um, numerous offences relating to cybercrime. It also creates new offences. It sets out the jurisdiction of the courts, which have been extended. Um, it relates to the search and seizure powers of the police. So once that bill comes into force, we'll be sort of more on far into from a privacy perspective um, so the right to privacy is enshrined in section 14 of the constitution um, and in order to give effect to this right um, the government enacted the protection of personal information act now the act was promulgated in 2015 
13, but it's not yet been signed into law by the president. So it's not yet in operation. And what's important about um, the Poppy Act is that it establishes the information regulator and it also establishes a cyber security framework. So from that perspective, um, responsible parties or operators are obligated under the Act to secure the confidentiality and integrity of information in their control um, by taking reasonable and appropriate um, technical and organizational safeguards. So uh, just uh, as a parting shot, Fatima, uh, what sort of advice could you give to South Africans to protect themselves from falling prey to cybercrime? So I think definitely to take a proactive um, approach to cybercrime and to data protection. Um, as an individual, it's important to understand um, when you are on the internet and you are providing personal information, make sure that you understand who are you providing your information to? Um, are you consenting to provide your information? Who will that information be shared with? Make sure that when you consent, you actually read the privacy statement or the privacy policies. Um, and then just be careful. Um, I mean, there is so much um, going on with data fraud, identity theft. The internet is just because you're sitting, you know, in the safety of your home behind, behind a computer it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't need to be vigilant. Be careful with your credit card information. Um, there's so much fraud, fraud happening. So I would just say it's a word of caution and just be proactive with the way that you manage your personal information. Thank you so much for speaking to us and sharing that with us. Uh, Fatima Amir Mia, who is a director in technology, media and telecommunications practice at commercial law firm Cliff Decker Hoffmeyer. And uh, she's, of course, a woman making her mark uh, fighting cybercrime, which is notoriously male dominated uh, that particular industry.